Hello there fellow humans, and today I'm gonna not do a shop review, well I am, but I'm gonna review the Concept 1B because it is in the shop, but to briefly sum up the rest of the shop, don't buy crates, don't buy drawers, only buy resource packs if they don't include any credits, and don't waste your money on terrible tier 7s that you don't actually want, basically. Then you also have the Glory Hunters, which are pretty good. I might review them, probably won't, but... This is a good bundle, can recommend that. I think the flossy guy made a video about that, check that out if you care. My brain sometimes works too quickly for my face. And then the Relentless Power, I checked this out in last week's shop review, so if you want to know more about specifically the ML9051, check out last week's shop review. Now, let's get into the Concept 1B. Don't forget to open your free crates, because while the paid ones are bad, the free ones, they're free. Open them. Let's have a look at the stats of the vehicle. The turret armor is very strong at 250 millimeters, and basically the entire front of the turret is a gun mantlet, but more about the armor later. 140 millimeters at the front, 2.7k DPM. I'm using calibrated on this vehicle. That's my recommendation because it does have heat shells as premium, which means you can get up to 350 millimeters of heat penetration, which means you're going to go through absolutely everything. Now, despite this being a 120 millimeter gun, it for some reason has 380 alpha damage instead of 400, which is not very nice. But the aim time, 3.2 seconds and the dispersion 0.27 is very good as well. It's a very good gun and 10 degrees of gun depression as well. Together with the turret is going to allow you to basically peak anything you want. And 17 power to weight ratio is good enough to get you wherever you want to be. And it kind of does turn like a boat on the turret, but uh, there are going to be some downsides all the time. The armor of the Concept 1B is very interesting because the front of the turret is uh, impenetrable. There's no way you're going to get through. However, this cupola up here, 180 millimeters behind the vision device... You're not going to hit that, so don't even try. Basically, unless you're shooting at the side of the turret, which is relatively thin, and as soon as you turn the turret, look at that, a couple of degrees off, you can immediately start penning the turret of this vehicle because it's a very flat turret on the side. However, if you're engaging this vehicle from the front, the only option you have is the lower plate, which is quite wide, quite thin. Obviously, the upper plate can work. If you have high penetration heat rounds or, or a tier 10 tank straw, you can even go through the upper plate in some cases. But most of the time, if you engage this vehicle from the front, the only place you actually have is the lower plate. And if this thing is using its 10 degrees of gun depression, forget trying it. There are these tiny little extremities out here that you could aim for, but it's pretty much impossible to hit those unless you already have a very accurate gun. So, very good armor on this vehicle right here. The sides are quite flat. The upper deck here is angled inward, which means you're going to have quite a hard time penning it from the sides to try to shoot at the track area down here if you're firing at the vehicle or simply the side of the turret because it's very flat and not really that thick so try to avoid uh, this angled plate right here because if you're trying to shoot HE at it it's not going to work but it is an American rear and what do American rears have they are very thin right here which is can't be said for the average American but this vehicle is not a representation of that whatsoever it has a very narrow turret quite a wide hull but it is very well armored, so be scared of this thing when it's in a hull down position. And if you are playing the vehicle, try to go hull down as much as possible. Hide that hull, it is pretty big, but the turret, as long as you can point it at the enemy, there is no way they're going to get through it. Now the Concept 1B is available in three bundles of different tiers. This is obviously the worst that only includes equipment and the vehicle, which is nice by the way. These bundles including equipment is very important. Now 17.5k, I think on its own, this is a excellent price for this vehicle. Yes, I'm praising a bundle. That's rare. So here's the thing though. The 20k gold bundle isn't as good as the money bundle because this also includes 30 days of premium accounting given that this is a collector vehicle with a reasonably high credit coefficient you will have a better fun out of this unless you already have hundreds of days of premium time then the gold bundle is gonna be the better choice obviously if you don't need the premium time so basically 20k gold for all this stuff all the boosters times five unfortunately are locked which is sad but 20k for this vehicle i gotta say it this is a very good price right here. 
Not only is this already quite a good vehicle, it is also gonna get buffed in the next update by getting 0.2 seconds better reload. Now, that's not really gonna make that much of a difference, but still, it's there. It's already a very good vehicle, and it's gonna get buffed even more. I gotta say, I love the Chieftain, but I think with the Chieftain being ruined and this thing being slightly buffed, I think I'll have to put my money on this one from now on. Unfortunately for the Chieftain, fortunately for the Concept 1B, because obviously this vehicle's just, it's very good, especially playing hull down. Obviously if you have Kennedy 1 just YOLOing you like that, then there is nothing you can really do about it except fight back and wait till he's dead. Now, a little bit of housekeeping here. This is not live gameplay. I know other people do that. I know I've done it before, but I think I prefer playing a few battles. I played three battles, I picked the best two, and then we're gonna talk about what actually happened. Because while I'm playing the game, most of the time I don't even know what I'm doing because it's all just muscle memory to me. So basically, let's now talk about the vehicle more in detail. Now, Dead Rail is a great map for this vehicle because you can play this ridge line in the middle if you are aware of Crossfire because this vehicle essentially suffers from the same problem as an AMX M454 suffers from, but at a lot smaller scale that if you're entirely frontal to the enemy, they're gonna have a pretty hard time to actually get through you, especially if you hull down. But as soon as you move the vehicle any way, left or right, you are gonna have a very hard time actually deflecting any shells. So you always want to make sure that your enemy is exactly in front of you. So that's kind of the hard part with this vehicle. Now, two are dead on the enemy team. Seven versus five. Very nice there. I'm just gonna take a shot at the 777. I'm at 505 hit points. I pretty much now know where the 183 is. That's why I pinged the map right before he was spotted. Because helping your team out with advanced knowledge can also be useful, right? If you know where a tank is going to be, then it can be very useful to tell your team that because they might not be thinking about that or they might not even be thinking at all. Now, obviously, taking out the 183 is going to be priority. Someone told me that I play better on low HP, and the reason for that is, is because when I'm high HP, I tend to just, like, carelessly trade them away, but when I'm low HP, I actually have to think about the next move, what I'm going to do, but it still works, so it's just about fine. I never claim to actually try to play well, so there's that. Yeah, 505 hit points, I'm gonna go for the E50 and the STB here. Obviously, I don't want to get into a crossfire, so they're gonna hide behind the house right here. And this is where the vehicle is kind of weak, in a flat ground. That's where this quite big hull and the long lower plate is going to betray it quite a lot. And side scraping this vehicle isn't all that possible. It worked there uh, because the STB hit the wrong part. But if you are a good enemy player, side scraping in this vehicle is still going to get you penned anyway. So don't attempt it unless you're high HP and you can take the risk of possibly getting penned in the first place. So, M48 Patton, well, he's dead now, and that is gonna be 4.7k damage. This was the second battle I played in the vehicle. The first one was like, like 1,800 damage because it was over in two minutes. Here we go into the second battle with a Concept 1B. Well, it was the third I played, but yeah. Basically, what I do with a vehicle like this is you want to play hull down, you want to play around the turret. However, one thing that no guide can ever teach you, that you will see very soon, is awareness. You've got to be aware of what's going on around you. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to go into this bush. Obviously, the approach up to the bush is what's getting me spotted, not being in the bush. So obviously, I'm going to take the shot back off immediately. Now, I'm going to change my position right here. The WT just... There you go. He does ha not have an idea. I'm spotted. He knows I'm here, but he just doesn't care. And that is kind of a bad idea if you are him, because that means he's now going to get shot for it. Just also peeked out pretty far, which means I'm almost about to shoot him again. So you don't want to do that. You always, Ideally, you always want to pay attention to what's going around you. And now I'm going to say I'm going to play aggressive here in this battle. Obviously, last battle I was hanging back a little bit, just trading battles. So this game I decided I'm just going to peek everything and anything that moves. And it works sometimes. Now the VK size to peak and miss now here's the side scrape problem i peek out just a little bit too far and he goes straight through the front track right there and that's kind of the problem while side scraping now i'm gonna push the wt here and hope that the vk is not quite reloaded yet but he is now he goes down so what the point is of this move is to take map control be aggressive go for it to simply show that this vehicle can do that as well you can go for it now flat ground here not ideal again side scraping 
you can get penned through the front plate and the side of the front quite easily so it is not a good idea to attempt that just to demonstrate that right here also the thrill of idiot peeking kind of outweighs the reward of high w8 for me personally so while i know exactly what's going on i kind of tend to do dumb moves because they're fun to do so now i know there's an object there i know there's a car there i peek the object don't go out too far in there just peek as much as you have to and now i'm gonna reload get a little bit of separation you immediately pull back after firing so that the car doesn't get any dumb ideas so that i can reload once I reapproach the Karo. Now, I know the VK is looking at me, but I know the Super Conqueror is not. And the Super Conqueror, I can peek the Super Conqueror without the VK directly shooting at me. And now I'm going to be like, I'm just going to peek the guy. And there you go. Again, this is the problem of the vehicle right here. The front track extends quite far over the front of the vehicle, which means it's going to be very easy to get penned. And uh, that's the downside. However, it is an excellent vehicle that I highly recommend. Thank you very much for watching.